we're back again for another video and today we're gonna look at the timeline uh, I've laid this out so we'll kind of front load the timeline as you'll see in a minute and then afterwards get into kind of the nitty-gritty technical details that way if someone wants to go through this they can get through it relatively quickly so let's get started we'll start by taking a quick look at the combat spread and you can more or less ignore all of the data on the left just look at the picture on the right for our purposes with what we're doing we want to just be about a nautical mile a beam of each other within a thousand feet of each other here we have a situation with the timeline imposed on the screen um, where we have a pair of F-14s engaging a pair of hostile aircraft so prior to 50 nautical miles 50 nautical miles is the no later than for commit and and prior to 50 nautical miles um, the flight should be in combat spread and the situation needs to be correlated with AWACS if it's available so you need to make sure that you see the same picture that they do uh, it should also always be coordinated with the rest of the flight if there's no AWACS make sure it's coordinated with the rest of the flight or correlated with the rest of the flight. The flight lead at this point should be in TWS with the wing in RWS and that's because we're gonna start sanitizing. Um, the flight lead at this point should call heading, speed, and altitude for the section to hold. Because we're gonna be in combat spread, you're not gonna have those visual references that we normally have when we're in a tighter formation. So in this next section here, in reality, if the hostiles are hot on us and we're hot on them, you're going to have about 10 seconds at most to complete everything. So it really has to be something that everyone is good with prior to takeoff. Um, this is something that has to be practiced. But basically, prior to 40 miles, all sorting and sanitizing needs to be completed. So what I mean by that is everyone has to completely understand what the picture looks like in front of them and everyone has to know who they're going to target and shoot at. Uh, and when we get to the meld, by the time we hit the meld at 40, sanitizing has to stop. The flight will stay in TWS to maintain situational awareness, but the rest of the wings should go over to single target track on, on the target that they've been assigned. Once we hit that 35 nautical mile mark, all of the weapons need to be released and we need to be in the crank. So you've got really from 40 miles to 35 nautical miles to do that, give or take five seconds. Um, it takes three seconds for the Phoenix to come off the rail. So really you need to start mashing those buttons at 37, 38 nautical miles. In the crank, the flight lead will call the crank and the direction of the crank, so left or right, and that in theory is a 50 degree turn, kind of a minimum of 50 degrees. The first ship to hit the gimbal limit on their radar, so the Rio is going to call gimbals, or the pilot if there's no Rio, will call gimbals to the entire section, and the flight lead will call out the heading that he's on. That way the pilots and the rest of the flight can just hold that heading. So now we're looking at the skate. The skate is the most likely scenario that will be carried out after the crank. I think 99% of the time it's going to be a skate. And what we do in the skate is turn cold on the hostiles. And after we've done that, we have a couple of options. We can either just leave the area, depending on the assessment made by the flight lead in AWACS, or we can recommit and go back in for another run after we've extended out and we would at that point basically just run another timeline so the timeline is something you can do over and over until you either run out of weapons or you've dealt with the situation in some extreme situations 
there might be a bonsai call. So in this case, the flight will the flight lead will call bonsai, and that is effectively when we would turn into the merge. Uh, it, this is not something that should be done lightly. This is generally only done in an emergency situation where where the ship would be in danger or high value assets would be in danger. Um, we, we definitely need to prioritize the survival of our flight and and when we go into bonsai we go into emerge we give up any advantage that we have we put ourselves more or less on equal footing to our adversary whereas especially in the f-14 with the phoenix you are at a tremendous tactical advantage on timeline so you know, I really want to re reiterate, when we go bonsai, we lose our tactical advantage. If we skate and recommit, we stay within, the, within our tactical advantage. And we, we get to dictate how the engagement will go. And now we're going to have a look at a couple of examples of, of timeline. Uh, so here are a couple of F-14s. We've, we've been speaking with AWACS and pre-committed on these MiG-29s coming from uh, Shiraz or LAR. And here you can see the pre-commit phase. We're basically just uh, flying as a section. We're not in combat spread yet. As we turn and commit, the flight goes out into combat spread. So we're hitting that 50 mile mark right here. So now we've committed, and at this point we're sorting and sanitizing. Here the, the uh, wing has gone into single target track. We're still in TWS in the lead ship. Now we released our weapons a little bit late. So we entered directly into the crank by 20. And we also, um, we also waited too long to skate. So we're skating at 18 miles. That's still within the minimums, but we've discovered that it works better. It's a bit safer for us to do it at 20. And that skate actually turns into an abort. And we wind up landing two shots on the group behind the group that we were targeting. Here's another uh, timeline example where we have two F-14s and two F-18s. So this one isn't as picture perfect as the last one, but we release at 30 miles. I guess the weapons. We start to release pretty much right on time. Right on time. Uh, they go in. They take out one of the F-18s. And here we've we've uh, gone cold immediately. That was just a call made based on the situation. But the, the fire from the F-18s was completely ineffective because we followed timeline, we followed procedure. It just went right over our heads. And we were able to leave. At this point, we could have turned around and recommitted on the remaining aircraft. Here's another example. Um, so this guy, Pigeon, this was actually his his first flight with us and I was trying to explain timeline to him as we went. So this was his first attempt at it. And we did relatively well. We took out both F-18s and their weapons were not tremendously effective. Uh, Ray followed timeline. But here Pigeon just pulled too many G's and his aircraft broke apart. But if you focus on, on Ray's aircraft That's an example of a good timeline. 
and we can see the uh, aim 120s completely ineffective against us. This is an example of what happens when you don't follow timeline. And here we see the F-14s come in. They're not really well coordinated at all. Uh, Ray does a timeline here. Both of his missiles miss. And then they kind of turn bonsai. And at this point they've completely lost any tactical advantage that they had. And they just get pulled apart by the F-18s who, who take them down into the mountains into a turn fight. So we're not playing to the strengths of the F-14 here. And we're making it a fair fight. Which is not something we, we, we need to or want to do. And all of this information can be found in the Navy's all-weather intercept manual. Right here. Um, specifically, if you go down to... Let's zoom in here. Um, chapter 15. No, that's not it. Chapter, chapter 14. Introduction to Section Air-to-Air -air Weapons Employment. And this, this is basically goes through, you can see the timeline here, it goes through uh, in great detail everything that we've covered today. So if you're interested in this, I highly recommend looking through the official manual on the subject. Um, I will be doing more videos on sections of this manual later. It's by no means mandatory, but if this is something you're interested in, and if you're here, you're probably interested in it to, to some degree, I'd recommend giving it a look. Because we've really only scratched the surface. What, what we looked at today was a heavily simplified timeline, um, just to get people on track as fast as possible.